Okay, then I'll go ahead and call the meeting to order. <coughs> it looks like we do not have anyone from the public, so we'll move on to new business. And Kat, I believe you're signed up to do our monthly icebreaker. Yes, okay. I hope we haven't done this one before. We'll see. Um, my question is, um, talk about a character in a book who you feel either you see yourself in or you just feel a special connection to in someone. Ooh, that's a good one. I can do it. Have we done this one? Uh-uh. No. Okay. <laughs> you know, if, you need, if you need a minute to think. <laughs> I need the rest of the meeting. <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> No, no, if you start, I'll or I can pass. Deep, deep thoughts. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, I have two pages. Let's see. Okay. Should I go? Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. Well, like many people, I grew up reading the Anne of Green Gables books, and I was totally like just saw myself completely in Anne, even though I had loving parents and a family and was never <laughs> mistreated orphan or anything. But, um, you know, I definitely identified as what we called the tomboy back then. Um, and I definitely got a lot of flack from the boys and always had to compete against them and be faster and smarter and stronger and, you know, just like Anne and Gilbert. Uh, but I also was deep down a very sensitive poetic soul type person who communed with nature and named all my trees in my yard and, you know, felt the world very deeply. So, um, yeah, I always saw myself in Andrew Gables and I really have enjoyed sharing them with my kids. On one of the snow days, we actually watched like the 1985 version that I watched as a kid and it was very dreadful. So, not as good as the book. Well, that was very much the character that immediately came to my mind as well. I also really? loved Anne of Green Gables, 1985 version is the best one. Books are better. I love all the books. If you all haven't read When She's an Adult, Real Out of the Equal Sign might actually be my favorite. But I will say Emily of New Moon, the other <laughs> books by Ellen Montgomery. <laughs> Because I read those as well. I did not identify her with her quite as much, but I wanted to. Like, I wanted to be someone who wanted to write. I just never actually did. Um, so I, I am with you on the Anna Green Gables slash all other Ella Montgomery characters train. I'm trying to think about it, because I, I have to narrow it down, <laughs> right? Um, I've identified with a lot. Of characters uh, in no particular order. Laura Ingalls um, mm -hmm. appreciated Anne, but it just it somehow didn't connect with me in the same way. There was a book though that I read in that general age category um, that I became obsessed with, and it's Wise Child by Monica Furlong, and it's a fantasy novel. Not a lot of people I've met yeah, have no, read it, but when I do meet that person, it's like we, yeah, that's the book. Um, so in it, it's, it takes place in like the first century AD in, um, in England, Great Britain, uh, that island, and um, it's about a young girl who is figuring out who she is and um, uh, becomes the hapless apprentice to a suspected witch. Um, so it's just like the perfect book to me and I, I identified with something, the emotion, the emotional arc, I guess, to the point that like I read it several times since as an adult, there were a couple sequels they weren't as good. No one's ever made a movie of it. I have no idea why, but maybe that's what I'm supposed to be doing with my life is like writing the screenplay. Wise child. Wise child. I'm looking for it on Libby as we speak. I feel like my daughter would appreciate that. I was just looking it up too. She was yeah. misunderstood. <laughs> Well, 
Um, is this specifically children's books? No, no. it's any character that you feel like strong connection with or kind of see yourself in in some way. Okay, so I so if, if strong connection is is the threshold, then I'd actually have to say Anne of Green Gables as well, because it's the only book I've ever traveled for, and we're about to do it again. So yeah, when I was in high school, we went to Prince Edward Island, and we did all the Anne of Green Gables stuff, and and we listened to it was my my dad, my mom, my dad's mother, and me. So my dad is surrounded by all of his women. And we listened to the books on the way there, on the way back. And he made fun of it the whole time, but he announced at Christmas that this is the year we're taking Sammy to Prince Edward Island. So this summer, we're doing it again. <laughs> so. You have no idea the depth of my jealousy. <laughs> like one dream unfulfilled for me. <laughs> and it's the only book I've ever traveled for, so I guess I have to go with those. <laughs> and I'm doing it again, so. Brown, if you say Anna Green Gables too, this is going to be crazy. <laughs> I can guarantee that won't happen. <laughs> I can tell you what I'm not going to say, but I still know what I'm going to say. All right, who's left? Okay. Yeah, I guess like less maybe connection and more just other people seeing me as a character. Um, I dabbled in archery a little bit. So a couple of years ago, I had a, like an archery profile photo and I had done my hair in a braid. And so I got a lot of Katniss Everdeen. So <laughs> I ran for quite a while there. That was what folks were relating me to for a character, so. Susie, how about you? I know, I'm still thinking. So like, one that came up right away in my head was Ramona Quimby oh, yeah. from the books. And because I remember just like tearing through those books and like really being able to relate to her in that young mm -hmm. elementary school mindset. And I think, you know, now, like I'm a big Harry Potter junkie. So <laughs> I made costumes for my kids. One year my daughter was Hermione and the other one was McGonagall and you know so we've done those throughout the years. Um, and I kind of I guess as a teacher I relate to um, Professor McGonagall <laughs> in my class. Yeah so that's those are those are kind of it, it, that's like two totally different characters and two different styles but just where where I was at from childhood to adulthood. <laughs> uh, yeah. Can you narrow it down or you have the past done? I don't look at it, Tracy, I wonder if you have it. Yeah, I can go. I my first thought was not a book character and I connect more to her, but my book character I would go with Hermione from Harry Potter. Um, she was probably the first book character I truly related to, and that's why I keep going back to those books. Um, but my first thought was not a book character, it was Lara Croft from the Tomb Raider video game series. Um, I played that a lot when I was younger, and that was probably one of the first like heroines that I really, really related to and looked up to kind of in a way. Um, so that was like my first real connection with the character, but Hermione in books was definitely my, my like soul sister in books. <laughs> Okay, I really got nothing. I mean, I, it's been so long since I've read any fiction. And in college, I read what you read in college, and there's no characters I identify with in that stuff. I loved the books. like. But, so it, if I were to pick one, it's from a nonfiction book that I recently read. So it's not necessarily a character, but it's a person. I'm probably not to do that. But the book's called Option B by um, the same uh, Sandberg, is it? We wrote Lean and Lean. Oh, yeah. Option B um, is a it's a it's a book she wrote about losing her husband suddenly, but but her whole approach to how she handled that with, with herself and her family was as a person, someone 
I mean, I know all the stuff I've read in like the last year and a half, that book really rang with me because of just how she kind of approached life after that. So, I'm not a character. I'd love to meet her though. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Great. Thanks so much for a great question. Um, I will share that Wise Child is on the shelf in the children's area here. So it's <laughs> You not to check these things? <laughs> when I moved to a new city? You would not be on this board if not. Right. Um, anyone want to volunteer to do this next month? Has everyone had, had a chance to do one who wanted to do one? I think so. But I'm happy to do it again. Yeah, I can do it again too. I'm happy to. Do awesome. Katie, um, let's put you down because you spoke seconds after me. If that's all right. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's good. <laughs> so, uh, great. Hey, I'm recurring. I think it's. Am I at the least? No, I think it's this room. Oh, I don't. Do y'all hear it now? Okay, we'll figure that out. Uh, okay. Okay. So next agenda item. Just a quick update. Uh, as a reminder. We're going to be holding board elections next month. Uh, and then the June meeting will be my final one. I'll be here, we'll have a new chair in place. Um, and then hopefully after that, uh, there will be a new member. Uh, so we will be voting for chair, vice chair, and friends of the Longmont Library liaison. Um, in my experience, these are pretty casual. Uh, usually one person volunteers and uh, hopefully the others agree, uh, but we will vote on, on each one. Um, so I just wanted to share to be thinking about if you are interested in one of those positions. And as I said, I'm happy to share more about the chair responsibilities. Um, and uh, Jamie, I'm sure you wouldn't mind sharing about the full or the, the full liaison position yeah. with questions. Uh, so just something to be considering and will be on the agenda next month. Um, and this actually isn't, I mean, this is related to this item, but John, do we have any candidates, do we know yet, for this board? Have you all heard from the city for the... Okay. We haven't heard yet. Okay, great. Okay. Um, I believe the position is still open, um, so I shared with some of my colleagues. I just encourage everyone to share, because uh, I do think we have a pretty dynamic board right now, and I, I'd love for that energy to continue. Mm -hmm. Questions or comments on that one? Okay. Uh, next up is the code of ethics for council. I have a question. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. Right. Yeah, go for it. What do we do if no one steps forward? I am not sure. Yeah. Are we allowed to actively sort of recruit, campaign for? Yeah. I mean, I don't think there's anything against that that I've seen. It must be a possibility because I know that there's always, because um, while this is the open board period, um, I always tell people to kind of look year round because there can be open board seats at any given time because the city only puts everything out open right now. But if somebody resigns or if something doesn't get built, there's always a possibility off cycle for there to be openings. Wait, so I think, I'm so sorry. I think yeah, this is me. I'm going, I think I mistook the question. I, I, think, I thought for some reason Catherine was talking about no one wants it to be in a board position. That's what I thought. But it's oh, like sorry, sorry. <coughs> okay, I misunderstood. So I don't know if that then changes my answer to you. Um, so if no one wants to be in a board position, I guess I need to look and make sure. I don't think there's anything in our bylaws. I'll look back and check. Um, I'll see if there's any materials we have from the city on what happens then, um, but I'm honestly not sure. So I'll do some digging and, and see if there's any guidance. Maybe I'm the one who's confused then. So we, next month we're going to vote, or at least we are going to vote, mm -hmm. on officers for next year. Starting, starting in June. The next yeah. cycle. But for the yeah. next, yes. Yeah. Are we also looking to fill just empty 
seats. On yes, the board. we're going to have one empty seat, and that is open on the city's website under the board openings. Okay, so what Catherine's saying is if nobody says, hey, I want to be in that seat, then we're not sure of what next steps are? Or? No, she's asking about the current <coughs> membership. Like if no one wants if, to represent. If no one steps up because uh, because Cynthia's done, if, if no one here says, I want to be yeah. chair, you weren't here to last, us. okay, sorry. The, we're gonna get back on track. You weren't okay. here last meeting. My term ends in June. Okay. So June is my last meeting, and so that's triggering us to have an internal board election. Yeah. 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 Um, um, okay. Hey, I understand. But I'll look, I'll look and see if I have an answer to Catherine's question. <laughs> I mean, that may not be the situation, but it would be good to know. Yes, yeah, I'll let you know. Um, I'll let you all know what I find out. Any other questions on this agenda item? Okay, next up, uh, Tracy sent us an email, the, uh, forwarded an email um, on, let's see, April 11th. Um, that was to, it should have gone to all of us. Um, and or it came from John. Thanks, John. Um, and it looks like that on April 9th, a city council ordinance was introduced that would create a code of ethics for city council all board members. Um, the email does have some details about the process uh, and how this is. Um, and my understanding is that city council will hold a public hearing on April 23rd, and uh, just something to keep us all aware of. John, is there any more info you have on that? Or Susie, is there anything that you have on that? I don't. Okay. I don't know anything about that. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's on our agenda. I can um, have Tracy also send you the language for that. If anyone is interested, I'll pull it up and then I'll um, have Tracy send that to you. I don't think I can send it to all of you it has to go through the secretary for um open records and yeah. sunshine yeah sunshine laws so um so we'll get that that language i thought i saw that something well we and you know i did not get i'm looking through my email right now i didn't get a copy of the agenda or any of the meeting materials that i usually get I could see the link, link for meeting for meeting for this meeting. It actually attached to the it's called it ordinance amending the one on yeah. municipal code and it is attached. I didn't see it before because it was it it's attached. Yeah. I and when did that email come out? Because I see the email for, um, reminding us of the meeting with the link, yes. but I Thursday eleventh at ten forty. I don't see it on one. It came from John. Oh, not well, oh maybe that's why I'm looking under. Uh, it's okay. I know. Okay, I know now. you are on there. Okay. Whatever that means. Susie's on there. Yeah. Okay. So check let's your see. job. Probably it's Bruce. John since it came from me. Okay. I see the ordinance. I'm just being nitpicky. Are you allowed to email that many people on the board at once, John? I was instructed to by the city clerk. Okay, good. In this you case. Yeah. Okay, I was like, ah, I don't want to get in trouble. No, normally you're right, but but the instructions were to please forward to all your board members. So I figured if the clerk's telling me that, I'm allowed to. Yeah, that's a good position to be in. <laughs> but this is not the email that has the agenda, correct? Or yes. Like the direct yeah, you are correct, correct, Susie. That is a different email. I think it's okay for me to forward you that email. I'm not sure why you, you wouldn't I don't know what should be on there. I, but email. I also don't. I didn't, get I didn't get it either. I didn't get the agenda email either. Okay, okay. So I'm not losing. Wait, I think, I think it's okay for me just to forward y'all that right now. I don't think that breaks anything. I, mean, I can do it. I have to Actually, yeah, if you don't mind just to... Um, I think someone has the other one. Wait, double check mine. You can use either, but if 
like I need to use my laptop mic, and I think that will reduce that. But, but if you use the owl mic, then you should mute yourself. Okay. Yeah. Hey, so who else wanted that forwarded to them right now? It looks like Susie, Katie. Um, I could use it. Okay, great. Katie. Awesome. And then Rihanna, did you need that as well? copy of that um, and I'm going to get us back on our agenda. Okay, your speaker, uh, your mic is on. Okay, wait, are y'all able to hear me on Zoom? that if it will not bother us. Um, okay, getting us back to our agenda, it, it, it just thanks for sending that out, Susie, the, the language surrounding the code of ethics. And um, if anyone has questions or comments, it looks like April 27th is going to be the time to, to share those. Moving on to our next agenda item, um, Request for reconsideration, if you all remember the form that John had shared with us uh, last last meeting. So John, let's pass it to you for updates on that one. Sorry, just It's okay. Um, with Tracy's going to share it, but I can start talking anyway. Um, well, well, we lost a little bit. We can hear you. You can? It's just that Katie in the Zoom twice. I'm not sure what that's about, but the one of the other one has the mic on, so that might be sort of the issue. Yeah, and there's a. You can see me twice. I can only see myself once. The other one froze, and I had to close out and uh, rejoin. Hmm. I can only see myself on once, but that's the second time this meeting has happened to me. So I don't know what's going on for me. Mm -hmm. Remember, the moderator, maybe like. Push her out, the second view, the one that's yeah, the second one. We're just giving Tracy a moment to. Hopefully, do so. You did it. That looks better. Perfect. Thanks, Tracy. screen on Zoom right now. So um, I, I brought this up last month, um, explaining that we are going to make some changes to this. Um, these are the changes. So the first first page is uh, an explanatory page of what request for evaluation is. We've never had anything like that before. Um, um, and then it basically, you know, and this was in your packet, so you can read through it and. You, any time and, and you can let me know if there's something that you have a question about. Um, but we did m change some critical things to our process here that we did not have in place. Um, 
So one is um, timing, and I think, can you scroll down a little bit? Yeah, more so that second part. Okay, so the, where the, the section of a, a patron has the right to request. So this goes into some things that we never had a place before. So mm -hmm. um, you can see them here. It has to be filled in the entirety. That's fine. But um, the big things are you have to be a Longmont resident within the tax paying service area of Longmont, and you have to have a full access library card. Yeah which is stated intentionally full access so that someone doesn't just sign up for an online library card. Um, that won't count. Um, then a, uh, a patron or group can only have one active at any given time and only two in a year. So, um, and then on the resolution of it, of course, this was still in place, but we won't remove anything from the shelves. We won't cancel a program. We won't remove an exhibit or anything um, while it's under consideration. Um, and it cannot be challenged again for three years, whatever the item, program, mm -hmm. exhibit, display wow. is. That's something we didn't have in place either. So um, those are some of the, the biggies there. And then um, if you scroll down just to the form, So the form matches now what we did. You can kind of just see, and then I don't even know if you remember the previous form. This is pretty similar. Um, you can see with the address, it's pre-filled in Longmont, so you know there's that. A um, uh, little change, and of course the library card number has to be there. Um, and then what what is being asked to reconsider or challenge, so you have to choose one of those items. Um, and then the rest is pretty much the same as far as then explaining it and all that. And the very bottom um, of this um, is just a statement here about what happens. This is pretty similar to what we had before. Um, before it would say that the director, um, I think a committee would be formed. So I modified this to basically say as needed. Um, sometimes, often I consult with with librarians responsible for those areas of the collection um, if I need to, but I, I didn't want it stated that there's an actual committee in, in the sense that there are meetings and things like that. Um, and the other aspect of this is once um, the decision is made, the decision is final. There's no appeal process or anything like that. Um, and there's uh, some legal stuff added in here by our legal departments. This whole thing went to the city attorney's office, by the way. And the Open Records Act statement at the bottom um, is reflective of that to indicate what happens if you do fill out a form and, and what that means for your personal information. Mm -hmm. The um, it, it could be if things change at the state level, because now they're trying to put maybe a different version of that bill back in. It died in committee at one point to have a ban against book bans legislation. It may come back in a different form, and now people are talking about um, that, no, it's truly, if you fill out a form, it's public information and it won't get redacted. But we'll, that's not anything that's immediate. So, um, so I think we can stop sharing. Back to the Zoom, so I can see everybody. Can I ask a question? Yeah. Um, what is question? Yes, you can. Um, with regard to the two different time frames that are listed, I don't have it in front of me right now, but it was like two a week, two months, and three years or something. Yeah, it was um, two two years. Yeah, sorry, I already forgot to. But <laughs> over there. Yeah. Um, I'm just. I'm just curious, honestly, about like how did you pick those time frames, and then if someone were to say like that's arbitrary or whatever, you know, like what kind of what's the rationale around it? Um, a lot of this, most of this, was put in place by looking at other libraries, mostly in Colorado, and to see what kind of policy and procedure they had in place. So this is in line with many of them. Now, some of them vary. Um, I can't really tell, you know, some, some libraries, they have their districts and they have decision-making bodies, boards of trustees that ultimately gave the timeframes. 
Um, I'm not sure how they came up with them. But I, it, for my purposes, I just wanted to make sure we weren't completely doing something different that other libraries in Colorado were not doing. And then would this apply equally to online materials and like actual physical texts or yeah. is there a different procedure in place? No, someone could could fill this form out for something electronic. So an ebook would fit within there. Yeah. I mean they could even reference something within a database, I suppose, if they wanted. Is it anything that the library has, like it could be periodical or yeah. It really can be anything. Yeah. Is there an age on it? I can't remember. I didn't see. Do you have to be 18? Um, I don't know that we put an age. Mm -hmm. How, would you entertain a request from a minor? I suppose. I mean, it's never happened. Um, unless there's other. Did it disconnect you? Sorry, What's we're having a bad network day, but bear with us. Um, did you hear me to start answering that? Uh, I, I don't, there's no, there's nothing in there now. I don't know if there's something at a larger level than the library that would state whether some somebody who's a minor could fill out a request for reconsideration, but we don't have an age stated currently. At what age can you get a full library card? Any age, but you have to have um, a parent guardian signature if you are under 18 so oh. or 16. I can't remember what our library card policy is so theoretically you could have a full access library card as a baby but if, if, if a form gets filled out it's really the parent guardian that ultimately is responsible right. for that as well just as they're responsible for the library materials I guess is the logic I would use there but it's not something we discussed. I mean, I don't know if it matters or if there ever would be anyone who would want to do that, but I certainly, in my experience as a teacher, have known some very zealous teens who might get on this train, and I don't know if they have the right or capacity to make that decision. Yeah, you know, it, it, unless there's, uh, I mean, and I, I could look, I, probably what I would do is I would address that if something happened and see if there's anything, you know, legally that would inform that, but otherwise if they have a library card and they fill it out, then it would get the same process. I have a clarifying question. Um, I'm glad you mentioned the lawyer piece because uh, I was wondering about, like I, I expected to see the bit about um, name and other personal information being redacted and the but we, we're still, the library is still okay to require that the person filing the request give us their name. Yes, and that's, your, that's correct. It, it cannot be and it's stated as such as you saw. Yes. Yeah. Second question is, are there people who have a full Longmont Library borrowing card but do not live in the tax paying area? Oh, there's plenty. So you have to have both. You have to have both, yeah. That was something we decided. You know, at, because co in Colorado, any Colorado resident can get a library card from any library in the state. You don't have to live in that jurisdiction. Sure. Now okay. some- Do you have to pay for it though? Some charge, some don't. Okay. Most don't. Okay, I was, yeah. I was remembering an argument, it was about something else, but it was at a, <clears throat> at the Princeton Library where the patron, uh, you know, spends over $100 a year for a Princeton library card and so feels like they're paying for the right, right. to right. give their input. Yeah, I mean, you know, the, I, I, I don't doubt someone could disagree. Even a, even as a team here, as we came up with this, mm. there, was, there was a good dialogue about residency and library card, mm -hmm. or just do one or the other. Because even if you don't have a library card, but you live in Longmont, you're still, your taxes are still going to the library, right? So, uh, you know, but it, in the end, and again, what a lot of other libraries were doing was this model, and 
the library card is more of a statement that you're a library user. Yes. Okay. Right, so that's that's where we did that. But and and they're both there because it's so easy to get a library card from anywhere. Okay. I I just want to say again too, you know, at least in my time here, I have fielded a total of four challenges, um, and I, I've never experienced anything that this lays out. You know, as far as getting multiple challenges from one person or a group. You know, some of the stories you read in the news are fortunately not happening here, mm -hmm. but I just want to make sure um, that we're set up for that. So we exactly. have something in place so that, exactly. you know, that's that's a lot where this is coming from. Um, so it sounds like a very wide Yeah, thanks. Yeah. A group that really wanted to go ham on this library, they'd have to like divvy up their list you you can do two this year, you can do this yep. year, and we cannot do the same. It would take one. a lot of coordination. Yeah. And, and and still for the most part at least well I would actually say this nationally. I mean it's still more school libraries that are getting hit with all of this than public libraries because it's just a whole different situation. But uh, that's not to say they're not. I the mean program go look at any news in the state of Alabama. Or ten, get tennis, don't Arkansas. Um, I mean, Alabama yeah. librarians can get fired, criminally prosecuted right. now for anything that They're someone really decides rough. is obscene. Not hey, obscene. Actually, you just wrote my rough draft of this paper, and it ended up, it's supposed to be 10 pages, and it ended up 24 because I just kept finding more and more and more faces, and was just like, ah, quite all current, you know. Hopefully, you'll have to pair that back down to 10. I don't know. I haven't heard from the president. Like, I'm really sorry. I just found a lot of pieces. Overachiever. Yeah. I just remember in school uh, thinking all well, the time. Well, I, I mean, I think the problem with the school libraries is that you just have a lot more discretion in the school libraries. <laughs> but anyway. I think that the biggest difference to me with schools is when when kids are at school, the schools are legally responsible for the children. And that is not true in a public library. Mm -hmm. So, um, and I think these, these groups out there and, and other individuals, you know, that's kind of what they're standing behind is, is it's my right as a parent, you know, blah, blah, blah. We all have read it and stuff. And it, it, it is, it is your right, and it always has been. It's, it's, I don't, as far as I know, it's not right. you. Right, it's, <laughs> it's just, you know, but. Yeah, I think this. I like how this one is very clear that the library staff does not serve in Loco Parentis. Mm -hmm. I think this really gets to, you know, a good faith effort to hearing from the citizens and people who live in Longmont and use the library, yeah. but not opening up to you know, someone who has never stepped foot in, in this town or in this library. Any other comments or questions for John on this item? One last thing I'll say too is the the, the content that explains the form will be on our website along with our other policies. The form itself is only available here. You have to come in and get the form. Oh. You can't download it. No. At least currently. That's something the state, state legislation could change and make us do, but right now I'm not. And that's a mix in libraries, by the way. Some have it online and some don't. Some have it online even where it's fillable. You know, you could submit it, and I just, I, I'm not interested in that. If, if it's that important to you, come in, and I'll give you directions to the library. Yeah, and I think that goes along with, you know, you have to live in Longmont. Yeah. I think that'd be very different if you're opening it up. Correct. Uh, without that. I'm curious you to have, see. Sorry. Pardon, Sue. Go ahead. Let's get Catherine and Jamie. Okay. Thank you. I was just wondering, does this have to go to City Council, or can we just like, say it's happening? No, the board, this board can say, you can actually even make a motion to, to do that. It doesn't have to go to Council, it did go through the City Attorney's Office to make sure that was all good, and, and that's right. the version you're seeing. But it would be good to officially in this meeting have library board uh, motion that, for sure. So. Jamie, any comments before uh, we open the floor if anyone wants to make a motion? 
I appreciate the specificity. I find the form to be very well thought out, very strategic. Uh, library sponsored programs only. I, I, that's a nice inclusion. Um, I am curious how this would be employed or will be employed with programs. Um, that's, you know, for whatever reason, that's what I think is likelier that someone's going to have like a major issue with or a group of someone's. And you have to know it's happening in advance. Mm -hmm or that it's an ongoing series or something, Correct. you have to f file this request right. far enough that it would be very difficult to stop the program from happening. Yep. And so what have your responses been or what would your responses be to people who show up at the event to protest at the event? Well, the closest we got was last summer in June, uh, we've done our when we did our rainbow story time mm -hmm. that we've done in the children's department here, as far as I can tell, for at least the last five to eight years. Um, and I got letters before; no one actually formally challenged it. I certainly received mm -hmm. communication mm -hmm. from people. I got a petition, one you know, one you know, but no one actually formally challenged it. So I didn't actually have to approach it in this formal way. And then at the event itself, um, no one came. Mm -hmm. No one to protest came. Right, I've right. heard stories like that in libraries, and we set ourselves up to kind of be prepared if people come in to protest. And you can't, there's certain things that you can't do to stop it, and certain things you can. But. Hey, other questions or comments right now on this form? To yes, let's go. Let's move to support because we are not a governing body. So I move uh, that mm -hmm. the library board uh, is in support of the request for evaluation of library materials, displays, exhibits, and programs form as uh, as written. Do I have a second? Thanks, Catherine. All in favor? Okay, motion passes. Should we see if you get that down or you want me to repeat it? Okay. Okay, moving on. We're jumping around in our new business. Um, I also jumped too quickly to new business, so I, I'd like to go ahead and discuss our meeting times and then circle back to agenda item two, approval of previous month's notes. <laughs> This has definitely been a Monday for all of us, I believe. Um, but let's go ahead and finish out our new business. And so that is looking at our meeting dates. And it says June through September, but let's go ahead and start with May. Um, once again, we normally meet the third Monday, but due to conflicts, uh, we might change that. So, let me get my calendar off. So is that why in general we don't have like a standard, like a recurring invite, and you know, where we would just. That's my understanding. Okay. And, and I think it has to be put forward a certain number of day, you know, it has to be a 48 hour notice and, and so on. Um, so I don't think you can have a standing meeting invite because it has to be shared for public invite to be heard. Okay. I think it has to be like a different, a different one each time. I mean, got it, it. you're correct. You know, there probably could be a, a recurring invitation for it, but it would have to be updated every time with the packet and the link. But also, I think part of it is because this board meets on a Monday, there's always the chance of a Monday holiday that affects it. So it's almost like you would have to change the recurrence almost yeah, you go four back or five times you... a year. Anyway. Okay, so. Six, one, half. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Our meeting in May is currently scheduled for May 20th, is the third Monday. Um, I, I know, I'm actually not sure of the school calendar for St. Ray. Oh. Um, right. So I don't know if that is interfering with. It does. Okay. I mean, it's still in session through the 23rd. Okay. But I don't think it doesn't interfere with me. Okay. No. Okay, I'm looking, Katie. 
No. Oh okay. yeah. Great. You're good. Okay, let's keep that main one. The third Monday of June is June seventeenth. Um, what I know there's a federal holiday in June. What day is that again? It's it's Juneteenth. Juneteenth. Okay, so that's won't well, interfere. That's Wednesday. Okay. Um, I'm not doing tea. 18, sorry. 19. 19. <laughs> I mean, I think it's absurd on that day. That's not one of those that I think so. Do we want to double check that everyone will be here in June, though? Because, yeah, for summer holidays. Uh, I will be here. Okay, so Catherine will not be. I will be. I don't know. Okay, Jamie will be. I'm just making sure we have a quorum. Katie and Brianna, what are y'all pleading? Are you going? No, those are those dates are fine okay. for me. Brianna's not. That's um, priced it out for me. I'm traveling in May, but I will probably make it. Okay. As long as there's no flight delay. So. So and Cynthia, when is when is officially your last meeting? That June meeting will be my last meeting. Okay. I'm sorry to miss it. Oh, next month. It's been so many years now. In your absence, you might get voted as chair. <laughs> yeah, be careful. If you so, just pay. You might want to find a way to do it. Huh. <laughs> okay, so we'll continue with June 17th, um, as we will have a quarter of that day. Okay, July. This is putting us at July 15th. That one's fine for me, too. Okay. Anyone else see any issues with that one? Catherine, did you? Are you good? She's looking. She's looking. Okay. I mean, it's getting out there too. I will not be here, so my schedule does not matter that day. Okay. You're good for July? Okay. Okay, so I'll mm -hmm. them. Okay, and let's go ahead and just finish out the summer. Um, August 19th is the August meeting. I have no idea when school no. starts back up. 17th? Oh, I just looked it up. It starts the 15th. Okay. Oh, yeah, 17th. Okay, so any conflicts that people have with August? Well, I guess it's for 13th, 14th, or 15th, depending on the age of your kid, but still, it doesn't okay. interfere. It's not the best day. All right, well, then we're going to be keeping all summer meetings on the third Monday. Um, let me just double check. Oh, September. We wanted to look at that. Okay, September, the third Monday is the 16th. Not a holiday. Okay. Seeing no one speaking or no nods. Sounds good. I don't know about that one yet. Okay. We can use that if needed, but let's go ahead and keep it for now. Great. Okay. So I see we are keeping all meetings May through September as the third Monday. Yeah. Quite the accomplishment. It's rare that it happens occasionally. Okay, so at this point, I'd like to circle back to agenda item two, approval of the previous month's minutes. Um, any corrections anyone has for those minutes? You're doing a good job. I think it's complicated. I'm just making sure that we still have everyone on Zoom. No, oh, I go ahead here. Just nothing. <laughs> okay.
I, I was in, I had to be out of the city all day, so. Yeah. So can you go set up on the weekend there? Uh, Oh, no, they just took over the hosting again. Great. For a second, you were host. <laughs> okay, I think we're all back. It's yes. It's like, great. Um, okay, so we are unfrozen. Um, okay, any corrections that anyone has to the minutes, the March minutes? I motion to accept. Thanks, Jamie. Motion to accept. Is there a second? Thank you, Katie. We have approved them, and I will go ahead and sign them. And we get back to our regular agenda. Okay, now, jumping back to item five, old business, we only have one agenda item for that, and that's just an update on the 2023 annual report. Um, the board will be presenting that to council on April 30th. Um, unfortunately, I, for medical reasons, will not be able to be there that day. And, and so I just wanna check in, Catherine, I, I believe you were able to, is that? Yeah, as long as you can help me prepare for it. Yep, I can do that. Doing others. Perfect. Thank you. Okay, so Catherine and yeah, do you have to um, like get there early to get a position, or is it going to be like on the agenda and I'll know what time I have to be there? Yes, yeah. it's, it's on the agenda. Um, I'll try to, as best I can, get a sense of where that'll exist. You know, there's always a little bit of a gamble with. Um, public comment um, and other things, but I, I'll i make sure that that's clear. Um, and then the other thing too is um, when Cynthia thought she was gonna be able to do it, I had set up a, a meeting where we could run through the presentation. I'm obviously gonna be there. Um, so if you're the one doing it, I'll, I'll just get with you and find a time in the next week or so, or, and I have a slide deck for it. Um, that we can run through. It pretty much mimics the actual annual report that was in the packet, just okay. kind of consolidated into a slide deck um, as required by a council or, or somebody. Okay, so as long as I'm there a little before seven, it's fine. Okay. Probably. I mean, if I find out, like, if I can get a more you know specific time, like. Like if there's a few things on the agenda, it's probably going to be safe to get there maybe after. I'll 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 find that out. But otherwise, I'd plan to be there at the beginning. Yeah, just because uh, we have multiple kids going to multiple activities that night, so I can I can ask people to help you if I need to. I just have to. Okay. Thanks, and Susie, it looks like you. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so if it's under special reports and presentations, that happens before first call public invited to be heard. Mm. Um, so you know, we just do the roll call, Pledge of Allegiance, approval of our minutes, and then it goes right into special pre uh, report presentation. So if it's in that area, I'm sorry, if it's in that area, it'll be not long after 7. Okay. Oh, thank you for that. I'm pretty Thanks. sure that's where it is, Catherine, anyway, so that would be good. Because I think the next one would be general business, but that's at the end. <laughs> So I hope that they don't do that to you. <laughs> Typically, beginning. Thanks, Susie, for clarifying. And I'm, I'm happy, Kevin, we can chat offline, but I'm happy to uh, also be there when you and John meet or relay messages, kind of what, whatever I can do in the interim as well. Um, but I also wanted to share with the rest of the board that we are on the agenda for April 30th. So if anyone else would like to be there, I'm sure the support would be appreciated. I mean, the more the merrier. I yeah. plan to be there, and I'll just, Thanks, for what Jamie. it's worth, I'm willing to serve as second in, if something happens. Great. Perfect. Thank you. Okay. Comments or questions about that agenda item before we move on? Okay, then let's jump ahead to our reports and information items, and I'll hand it back over to John for the library director report. The only thing I I wanted to share in my director report this month was just something that 
was shared with me after the eclipse so that I thought was pretty phenomenal. Our children's department, um, they wrote a grant through the Space Science Institute to get glasses and then they ended up getting a little bit more. They just kind of sent them. Um, so the library was a pretty big player in this eclipse. Um, they handed out um, over 2,000 wow. eclipse glasses. Um, which I thought was great for free, might add, I might add, obviously, um, and and because of the work and making sure they were on top of getting that grant, because you know when they're out, they're out. So um, I just wanted to share that little um, tidbit that I thought you would all like to know. That's great. I, I love those sorts of, and I'll just jump back briefly to the previous digit item. I love those sorts of stories um, it, it included in any sort of report. Um, some of those, uh, I mean, this one doesn't have a number attached, but some of those kind of qualitative uh, statements uh, as well. Um, thank you. Great. Next up, I believe, is Friends of the Library. Let me just look again. Great. Great. Jamie. Uh, what do you want to know? Any, anything that you have to share? And if not, that's okay, too. Um, so, next sale is coming up in May. I believe it's the 8th. Through the 11th. Okay. And um, the friends are also actively planning their annual um, membership meeting, their annual member meeting. So they have an in person meeting that all of their 300 plus uh, members are invited to. And at that meeting, there is a general sort of State of the Friends uh, presentation. They present a lot of uh, data from the past year, similar to what would be shared in an annual report. Um, we're hoping to spice things up a little bit this year. Uh, they are also working on a video, which will be a short video, and we're working with Donald from the library here to edit that video. But basically, something to visually convey how much the friends, as a as a group of volunteers, puts into the library and how the library benefits. So, um, using the the vehicle of um, a donated book traveling through the different steps that a donated book would go through to wind up on the shelf in the bookshop or uh, in the table at the sale, and then um, what those proceeds then go to fund. Um, I, I think all of us have heard over the past several months here just um, how much of that link is not really common knowledge. Um, so it's a little bit of, of, of what? Of, sharing information, it's a little bit of brand awareness, it's a little bit of uh, call to action, like here's how you can get involved too, but um, in a different format than we've seen from the friends. So fingers crossed that would be when it's unveiled, but then the uh, video would be shared on the friends' social media and website, and it could be liked and shared by the library if they so choose, so on. Um, but lighthearted and quick and fun, but visual and informative. That's great. I love that idea. Yeah, I, I hope we can deliver. Well, this is something that's related to the frames that I've shared with, with John and, and with Jamie in, in a position as the liaison. I would like to put forward the friends for one of the Colorado Association of Libraries Awards. Uh, and that those are presented at the Colorado Association of Libraries annual conference in September. I think there's a volunteer of the year award um, that I think are just, uh, I, I really want to showcase the work that they're doing. Um, so I am planning to, it, I wanted to bring this to the board, um, but I, I do have the nomination process and I am planning to write a letter um, and, and hopefully connect with Jamie to gather some other materials that is due May 14th, uh, so I need to get on it. Uh, but I, I just wanted to share that out. If, if anyone would like to contribute to that effort, uh, 
happy happy to, to share what would be helpful. Um, but those are, like I said, due before our next meeting. I did have can you add, as can you apply for them as a as a group, or do you have to? Does Jamie have to help you narrow down an individual? An individual. I emailed the uh, the chair of that list, and sh uh, that person shared that uh, we, that instead of the volunteer of the year. Uh, so we basically have two options. There's a number of award categories. There's about six or seven that we could put them as the unsigned hero award because that wording does include a group. Or we could just have all of the friends listed for volunteer of the year award. Um, so my thought is the unsigned hero. I'm realizing that's not how I introduced this topic. Can um, you do both? Or probably not? I would rather, I think I'd rather not. Um, okay. It's going to be the same group evaluating um, I think we have a, I think it would be a better chance to do one. Um, so my thought is to, to actually send them to the Unsung Hero Award and that um, it, it's all under the Colorado Association. If you Google Conference Awards Committee, you'll see the list. Um, and this uh, award celebrates an individual group or organization who works behind the scene giving unselfishly to their libraries or library community. Um, it is meant to honor those who are, don't receive recognition because their work generally goes unnoticed, which I think is a perfect description of this group. That's a great question, though. I had a thought, and it was only in the past few days um, since the weekend. Uh, I, I completely support uh, nominating the Friends Board for um, for the, the Unsung Hero. I would also uh, support nominating the group of volunteers that runs the bookshop. I was, I was I thinking was, of doing the full organization for this. Um, let's talk. Okay. Um, there's also one individual, so as part of making this video, uh, I came and I, I kind of was talking to people informally, interviewing um, some staff and some of the volunteers who were here on Saturday, and wound up spending quite a bit of time downstairs in the pre-sort room with Carol England, who was taking me through everything that happens to the book in that room. Like, how that bookshop is run specifically and when i say bookshop i mean i'm including like you know anything that we would put you know sell in the case or online or whatever but but those ongoing boutique type of sales rather than the, the four times a year sale it's unbelievable it's unbelievable how much time and, and effort goes into it but also the level of genuine care all of those books get cleaned and sanitized and, and minor things repaired and things that are stuck in books returned to their original owners, like wow. photos and letters and stuff. I mean, it's just so meticulous from start to finish. They are really thinking about how to present that book, every book, in the best way possible Everything is so organized, it's labeled. I mean, it, it's, I guarantee you that they are approaching their work more professionally than some booksellers in bookshops that, you know, commercial bookshops wow. are doing. Wow. And I was blown away. And I, I said, I must have asked her like three times. Um, and you're, you're a volunteer, right? You're all volunteer. Yes. <laughs> So, okay, cool. So, um, yeah, and, and sh she, I understand, um, is really the mastermind behind the shop, or so says Carla. So she's the bookshop manager. But Jamie, I'll get in touch then, because I'll rely on your judgment for who exactly to nominate. And I'll just share, if anyone else is interested, uh, please just shoot me an email. Uh, we're going to want to make sure and stay within uh, Sunshine Law, so I'll be emailing you all individually instead of as a group. Um, 
but uh, there's a letter, supplemental materials are encouraged. Um, so I, I'll share that. I'll gather what I can and then be in touch with Jamie. And, and if anyone's interested, please just let me know and I'll share with you all as well. I was taking notes as you're saying that for this letter. <laughs> um, great, well thank you for that update. Any other questions or comments on the uh, Friends update? I just wanted to ask um, <clears throat> Susie if you were able to attend their annual meeting. I know it was requested of you, but I, some of the Friends members have asked me if you were be coming. So, and you're, this is for the fourth, right? Yes, yeah. Yeah, I'll be there. Okay. So, and I said I could email, um, it said three-ish, they said I should come around three. Okay, perfect. I just wanted yeah. to make sure that's all. Yeah, I plan on being there. Thanks, Susie. Okay, uh, moving on. City Council Liaison Report. Susie, if there's anything you have to share with us. So yeah, so the first thing I was going to share, and I already shared it, is I will be attending their annual retreat for a brief moment. It's also the Cinco de Mayo Festival at Rosefeld Park, and I know we typically have a city council booth, and so I'll be there for that. But I'm going to step away to attend their retreat, and then I'll, I'll head back. Um, and that one is, and it's here in Longmont, too. I thought I saw the address. It's at the library, correct? Yes. Yes. It's in the oh. large okay. <laughs> crazy. community room. Um, meeting room. Yeah. yeah. And so, you know, something I guess that's that would be pertinent to you all is we did make our final decisions for the fourth of July. We had brought it back for discussion and really to see we were getting overwhelming um, you know, just uh, our mailboxes and um, voicemail, we're getting inundated with calls for pe of people who want it back at the fairgrounds. So when COVID hit, they shut it down that, it was 2020, no fireworks. 2021, and Gowanus is the one, is the organization that does um, do the fireworks. They fund the fireworks, they're the ones responsible for getting it the city's role in it is that we provide personnel um road you know blockage road um, police and fire presence um in and around where that they shoot off the fireworks um so they did I, i'm trying to remember if it was in 2021 i think that at that time boulder county was still not um you know uh, leasing out space and so that's when they did it at the um, country club at fox hill country club the following year there was talk of bringing it back and i think there was an internal you know just with staff having a discussion public safety and honest and really looking at since growth in the area and even those last final years i think like the last three or four years prior to COVID. It was getting more and more challenging to to manage that area because of you know recent buildings and just um, more density in those areas. So it was getting harder to um, to kind of mitigate traffic and, and take control of you know fallout spaces when it's at the fairgrounds. So I know that public safety has some concern about that. Um, now uh, it looks like Boulder County Fairgrounds has rented that space out for several years for a um, equestrian event that will be happening on the 4th of July and they, they're doing that. So our other option was to look at the fire, the Martin Street, so Martin and First, um, the fi uh, fire training um, oh. area. So it's oh. a particular DPL, there's the fire, you know, the, the building, the latter that they do their training for the um, fire department. And so there's actually a large enough space that they could contain where the fallout of fireworks will be within that range. And then, you know, we just kind of navigate and um, where, where people can kind of 
park it go to. Um, there was some concern because of its proximity to um, Dickens Park and the, the, near the, um, the, the, the St. Frank River and so you know there was concerns about impact to wildlife and new um, plants that have been planted there, trees. So we're kind of trying to, to navigate things. We're working with staff to um, to kind of make it more, block off some of those sensitive areas where people can park or, you know, set, set up and watch the fireworks at, an, at another location. Uh, we were also looking at organizing an event and it looks like we will be coordinating with Wibby's Brewery and some other businesses around that second, you know, from, from Main Street on 2nd Avenue, mm -hmm. east, like towards Emory Street, and um, so doing some road blockage. So I, 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 they were describing it, and it's still like in the works, but maybe like a street fair type um, with food trucks and different vendors and, and just do some road closures of some of the smaller smaller streets out by Whitney's to have an event there and then people can stay and watch the fireworks. We've also coordinated with the school district. So we'll have a pre-fireworks drone show. So we'll be doing that as well. So we're trying what we're trying to do is really create some space for residents and families to come and hang out and and recreate where they're not tempted to and, and our hope is to minimize some of the home fireworks that are that typically go on every year um it exacerbated during covid and it hasn't really you know settled down so i know we won't get rid of all of the fireworks, illegal fireworks that happen, but we're hoping that if we have opportunities for people to to engage and have something to do, that they'll be less inclined to, you know, to shoot off fireworks from their houses. So we're kind of doing what we can to be a little more proactive. So, um, so yeah, so that was our big discussion. Tomorrow, we do have our uh, boards and commissioners updates. So we'll you know, be sharing what um, we share tonight. And um, and then if there's anything else you want me to, to make sure that I mention, you know, please let me know. Uh, we do that for our council meeting and tomorrow's council meeting is actually our Longmont Housing Authority meeting. So we'll be commissioners to the Housing Authority instead of our regular city council. So yeah, and if anybody has any um, Thing they want me to make sure that other council members are aware of. Thanks, Susie. I, I, I'd love to hear from other board members. I, I think in my mind, the main message that I would love for council to know is what we've been saying the last few years, which is that we are we just desperately need funding, um, and that uh, keeping the budget stable is really decreasing it for the libraries as cost of digital materials rise. Um, so hopefully y'all can still hear me. It looks like we're having a little Zoom hiccup again right now. Um, great, okay, so my guess is I froze briefly then. But um, I think just, you know, it, that, um, yeah, well, what we've said before, just kind of going back to the to the report from last year and that um, how unusual it is for an organization like the Friends to be supporting programming. Um, but I'd love to hear from other board members if there are other comments to Susie's question. I was actually going to ask if I missed something and if John did get his budget approved. Where it's still, and, and don't correct me if I'm wrong, my understanding from last meeting is that it's still early in the yearly process and so it's not yet been submitted. Yeah, so in fact, today there was a, you know, intro to budget season. Mm -hmm. um, and so it, it kind of exists between now and end of May. Um, and so, you know, there's kind of two things there, right? So last year I submitted a budget, which 
nothing got approved um, because it was put into the election basket. So this year, um, you know, for the most part, I'll submit the same things, um, but there's no election, so this uh, it makes it pretty important, you know, that it is communicated to uh, council um, so that it's on their radar as far as what what funding the library got last year and mm. you know and where we are still in the face of the report council asked for yes I, I, I love tying it back to you know that we spend time and money on, on this report and so let's you know see what we can do as a response to that um, so that whole bit where we didn't we didn't uh, we didn't win anything out of that election the library didn't uh, have the measure passed and then the but there was a budget that wasn't like it was approved as at the same level as the prior year that's your that's last year's budget that's yeah, 2023 so, correct so the, the process when it's when it's like budget season so we start this now and then in May, I will present my proposed budget to the city manager. Your proposed budget for July 1 through? No. no. It goes September? No, or no. Do the calendar year? It's, it's calendar. Oh, okay. I was yeah. It's calendar. So the budget proposed in the spring, if approved, kicks in January 1, 2025. Correct. So you're that far out. That's how far out it is. Okay. So the one that was just not approved um, or, that, or that, not increased, that was... That was for the year we're in right now, 2024. But you had presented that in back, back... Yeah, in at this time spring. last year. Oh, wow. Okay. I understand. Thank yep. you. Thank to council in October. So we started hearing snippets yeah. at the end of, of August, where they start presenting the budget, and then we just okay. kind of yeah, it doesn't. It, that's correct. It doesn't really hit council till later. So the internal city process is now because we have to. There, there's a lot of things that go on. So for example, like if I were to request in my budget a new position, which I do have. You have to be thinking now. I have to, it's not just the position, right? So there's a, it, it impacts others. So if I request a position, HR has to say what it will cost. If the position requires technology, IT, ETS, so as we call them here, they have to say, okay, well, if you need a, a laptop, then you have to add this to that. So there's all these, mm -hmm. that's why we start now, because okay. by the time I present it to the city manager, that has to all be in place. Yeah. So what happened last year, when I presented but when I tried to present the budget was I was told no we're we're actually going to the voters for your um, right. funding increase right. for your budget not in this process so that's what happened so this year it's I mean it's always important but now there's no election to throw this into so right it's the, the budget process is all we have to have any changes to our budget that clarification is so helpful for me my first thought was like didn't we just didn't we just go through? Yeah, it always yeah. feels. I mean, I can. Yeah, yeah, I always feel like I'm in budget season. I can guarantee you. So, so hearing Cynthia, and then hearing Catherine, thinking about the um, the presentation of the annual report on the thirtieth, um, and thinking about the friend, you know, the comment about the friends and how we're funding programming and some of the other things, you know, it. What stands out to me is the, the fact that this is such um, a unique and wonderful community. I'm, I mean, I'm very proud to be here in Longmont. And one of the things that we do tremendously well, in my opinion, is um, bringing community together uh, with all of these different events and you know, fireworks. And it's like a street fair every weekend in uh, the summer and all of these like excuses to come and be together and spend money, right? We're, we're having a great time, we're peacefully engaging with one another, we're celebrating things, 
but we're also spending money at the food vendors and the, um, the pop-up tents and all of the local businesses, and those are all wonderful things, and we do it really well. And the library and the library programming and the library services, it's still like how many community centers or how many places within the community can you go and exist for free without having to spend anything? And, and not just exist, but you know, it's a different kind of consumption, it's a different kind of engagement. And protecting that space um, and, and you know, all of the many reasons why, uh, why the library should be supported, the report, and, and so on, but it stands out that we have an opportunity um, to also have this completely free, no expectation to buy or consume um, space, and we should just guess. Yeah, and that's one of the catch 22s is, is that there's no outreach department. So, like, I, I, you know, so much of like the e resources, for example, just pulling off the top of my head, are widely known, perhaps as well as they should be, besides those who use them. And so, I, I feel like the library is in this position where there's exactly what you're saying, but without, for example, the staffing to share that, how, how, do, you, how do you get that word out? Um, so, so, yeah, I mean, Susie, whatever you are able to share, but I, I think the sport's main concern um, is the, what Jamie was saying, the importance of a third space, um, in my mind, is very much tied to equity and inclusion, um, as well as what we learned from the feasibility study phase two, um, which was there's a strong public demand for these types of services. There's just, um, there just needs to be the funding for the library to grow and, and to fit a, a city of 100,000. Yeah, I mean, the, the study is still valid. I mean, it's yeah. now a few years old, but, you know, at, at the very basic level, what it identified was, um, understaffed, underfunded, outgrown space for a city of this size. Yeah. yeah. We're not, we didn't shrink. Yeah, and then. it's not yeah. shrinking, <laughs> so it's it's still there. And all the recommendations in there of, of how to grow. And you know, so last Wednesday, I attended the PI, um, Fathers in Valograados in Educación. They had their annual yeah. um, celebration. and. Lillian was there, of course, with her little tutu. <laughs> I love her. And, you know, so at these events where the library makes a present. So that was something, that is something I'm carrying tomorrow as well, as being, um, as a, attending that uh, event. And it was largely, I mean, I, I've gone every year for the past, I don't know, five or six years. And this is the largest that I've seen. Wow. I mean, the, um, participation wise and that this was their 15th anniversary so that you know they've been around for a while and so it, it's you know it's it's getting out there and our our community uh, so this primarily so the program was conducted in Spanish so people who were English only had the audio and it was translated to English for them um, and so everything was um, presented in Spanish and we had folklorico, so it was very just immersed, immersed in Latino culture. So having the library be a presence there to be able to issue library cards or to be able to um, engage the public and let them know that we have these programs. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's important that we have that kind of presence. So that that is something I have in my pocket that I'll be sharing tomorrow as well. So yeah, and I mean, those and you probably know this, but, but Lillian is at all of the pie meetings. Yeah, no, I know. Yeah, not just the, it, this one. This was the big one. No, that was the one that I went to. Yeah. I haven't gone to pie meetings. So. Yeah, she, she's at all of them, and she's built quite a partnership and, and does some fabulous programming at those. Yeah, 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 she does. Yeah, she's already built a lot of connections and, and trust with a lot of our, yeah. our family. It's great, building those relationships. Yes. 
That, it also makes me think of the 2,000 glasses that were just handed out, you know, supporting STEM initiatives in, you know, the, the youth, the, the importance of that. In our messaging, we just can't lose sight of the fact that telling people or showing people all of this awesome stuff that we're accomplishing as a, as a library, it, you don't want to, I don't want to say you don't want to paint too rosy a picture, but I think there is a temptation to see all of this greatness and infer that the library is fine. Well, I think that's what's been happening the last couple of years. Um, because the staff has been doing such a great job making it work. Yeah, yeah and that's a lot of yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, absolutely. That's the, it's not sustainable. That's what mm -hmm. I, the messaging I've pretty much said anywhere that someone wants to talk about it, it's not sustainable. It's going to be burnt out. Lillian can't keep up what she's doing, you know, and um, already, you know, being being at the being understaffed as a department of one means it's great she's at Pi, but then right. who's missing out on other services? Mm -hmm. Yeah, because she can't be in more than one place, as far as I know. I don't want us to get to the point as a city yeah. where like we're thinking about well, what what would have to happen? What would things need to look like in order for more people to really notice yeah. that the library was deficient in funding, right? Like, if you don't know what needs to happen in order for that message to, to get across to you, and do we want to wait until that point? Well, some of it's happening now. I mean, with, with the budget process last year and the and election not passing, mm -hmm. I mean, effectively, and I've said this before, but our collections is a great example of that. Yeah. It's effectively been cut, and what that means is people are on hold list for longer, People are asking us, why is it taking so long to get this book? Because we can't buy more than X amount of copies. And, and, and we, in fact, we're buying less because things cost more. Mm -hmm. So it is happening. And, and do I remember correctly that, more. I guess two other examples of me, if I'm remembering right, is that the library won't have a presence at Cinco de Mayo, for example. Um, we'll be there, but there's some, other, right, there's, there's some other there's some other there's some other festivals where we will not be at because I can't yeah, have it, staff. Over. You don't have the staff. It's way too much. And then I remember the adult periodicals. Am I remembering this right, yep. or am I just making this up? That was cut. Yep. Um, so yeah. And the homebound program can't expand, can't even work. though there's a demand. Right. That's pretty big, and it takes a lot of one person staff time. Which, you know, it's a great it's service. Alright, go ahead. No, that's fine. This is definitely showing my true colors, but do you think there's any appetite for like a strike? What uh, I mean, teachers strike? <laughs> Maybe not in Colorado, but in LA where I'm from, teachers strike on one time. Well yeah. Like it's also unionized. Well it's public services. So um, I don't know how many members of the library staff are unionized. Zero. Um, so DPS, Denver, and Pueblo um, had strike. You know, they, they had strikes, and I remember going down and supporting them. But it was like, oh, like a couple of years where they were prepping their members, organizing. They had a strong message. They were taking, you know, collective you know, just these boats and surveys to see how many would walk out. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I think it's, I mean, I don't know. I, I, I've experienced that too, having lived in California, but not here. And most, most libraries are not unionized. And because of that, I think that that kind of tactic is hard, right? There's no su support for you doing it. If you decide to strike, you're just, you know, you gotta, everybody has to be, I guess, willing to <laughs> yeah. not get paid. I don't know how all that works, but that, that would be one of them. Well, thanks, Susie, for, for sharing our thoughts with Council. We always appreciate um, you, you doing so. Other comments or questions? Or, Susie, was there anything else in your City Council report that you were wanting to share? I think those were the, the big ones. I really want to make sure that I'm coming back with a clear um, message for council. Yeah. I'm not just 
discussed in, in our meetings, but you know, any pertinent information. Thank you. Wait, well, I want to circle back to John quickly. Um, I know there is one other thing you wanted to share about in your library director report. Yeah, just um, because I can't remember if I've said this before, but this will happen before our next board meeting, but on May 17th, um, the, we will be closing the library that day for our annual um, in-service training. So I just wanted to make sure that that was on the board's radar. Um, you know, we have a, a full day. We have a couple of big trainings just to give you a little taste of what's going on. One of them is um, I'm bringing in a, a social worker to train staff on trauma-informed care. We did a little bit of that last year, but that was more of an intro. This will be a two-hour session with some activities built in. Um, and then the other big training we're doing is in the EDI realm. Um, this is going to be a, another two-hour training. It's going to be a heavy day, but that one will be on allyship um, as it relates to largely microaggressions um, and really educating staff on that. Um, all of it under the theme of kind of some, you know staff care and supporting one another is, is really what this year is about. So, and then a couple other smaller sessions we're doing ourselves, but um, that'll be the day on the 17th. That's a Friday. Eventually, that'll go up pretty soon. We'll start getting announcements out of being closed that day. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm so glad I'll do that. Uh, it's so important to, to have that full. It's staff. helpful, you know. We don't. Just with, with a large staff and mostly part-time workers, you know, it's almost the only time we can get everyone together once a year without, you know, you can't really do it during normal hours. And it's not our preference to close the library anyway, but, you know, once a year we get to mm -hmm. do this type of thing. Agreed. So anyway, I just want to thank you for letting me circle back there because I really meant to mention that. That's very cool. No, that's great. And that's it. Part of, that's built into your budget, like that's how it's funded. Um, bringing in like the speakers or whoever you have. No. Presenting. No. No. And in fact, at the last board meeting, actually, so you are aware of this now that I realize, I brought to this board last meeting about um, using yeah. one of our funds to to pay for the trainers. The most sure. Yep. It was yep. in the minutes. Yeah. That's okay. No, it helped me just realize I have mentioned this. So, um, so no, we don't have the budget for this level of, of speaker fees. So we're using that fund to pay for that. Um, that'll eventually that won't go to council for appropriation until May. But um, does that does that fund take in new dollars? It earns, it earns interest. It earns no. interest. It earns interest, it's a trust, and we're allowed to spend on the interest accrued. But no one donates to it? No. It's it wasn't set up that way. Like it's not yeah. a... Yeah. Correct. A fund you could de yes. designate a yeah. donation to? Yeah, it was Correct. a family. Yeah. Um, okay. So that the, it'll support staff day for those two trainers, and then I'm also using that fund as an aside and they, uh, to support summer reading. Yeah. It, it'll help us have staff more available. All right, thanks, John. Well, we're nearing the end of our agenda. I did want to share under library profession news. I have not read this, but the American Library Association put forth their 2024 State of America's Libraries report, um, including mm -hmm. the top 10 banned books from 2023, um, as well as there's usually like a section on cool things libraries are doing, all types of libraries. Um, so if anyone is interested, that is easily found online just by Googling ALA State of the Libraries 2024. Um, any other comments in the from the wide, wider world of librarianship? All right, then any library board comments before we close? All right, our next meeting will be May 20th, and I will go ahead and adjourn us at 8.36. Thanks, everyone, for coming.